this is me, Kara, and today I'm going to be talking about my testimony, my story, my depression, and um, all the stuff that happened to me that was traumatizing, that made me who I am today. So if you guys like this video, don't forget to give some thumbs up, like, comment, share, turn the notification bell on so you know every time I post another video, and let's get started. So my childhood was rough. My mom and dad argued a lot, didn't get along. And they ended up getting a divorce. So the divorce was really, really hard for me growing up. Um, they got a divorce when I was 11 years old. No, when I was in high school. They separated when I was 11 years old. So that was a hard separation because you're used to having both parents in the house. And then when there was just one parent and then you see the other parent, the other half of the week, it, it's kind of like a new adjustment, a new change. And I don't deal with change well, so it was really, it was different, it was rough, it was tough. Then in high school, started dating this guy, my high school sweetheart, and I felt like this was a rough relationship for me because I felt like he wasn't into me. I felt like he was into other girls and not me. And for my first relationship, that was depressing to me because I really liked him. I was in love with him. My first everything. And he just didn't seem like he liked me. So I didn't think that he loved me. It was always like flirting with other girls and stuff like that. There was also rumors that he was cheating and I never got proof that he was actually cheating. I just heard from people that he was cheating from someone in, his ba in the band because he was in the band. And um, so that was hard because they told me on the bus these people told me on the bus that I didn't even know and they came up to me because they were a man and they came up to me and they were like oh so and so cheating on you you want me to find out who he's cheating on you with and I'm just like um I guess I don't know you know I just it was just a rough relationship and then it ended and he moved on to somebody else and then that was rough because seeing him with somebody else that you wanted to spend the rest of your life with because when you're in high school you always want to be with your first and your your first and only but well, that's not realistic sometimes sometimes it is but sometimes it, it's not so that was hurtful then when I went to college, I was in a really bad abusive relationship, really, really bad. Um, he was cheating, he would call me names, I don't know why I'm smiling. I just smile, just to smile, even if I'm talking about something serious. Let me try not to smile, but um, he was cheating, he was... You're just cheating, being abusive. And right after me, he got somebody pregnant. So I was like so devastated. Oh my God, this was the worst pain of my life. Seeing that he had another baby with somebody else right after me. I'm like, what? Like this don't add up. Like, were you like seeing her when you were seeing me or whatnot? So it was bad like he ended up back in my life again later on what I'm gonna tell you later on as I'm talking about this he, he's gonna be brought back up again because he was back in my life later on after I was 21 because this happened when I was 21 years old so I'm gonna mention him again but um after college I got really depressed about the relationship and stuff and then I ended up um, getting diagnosed with depression, bipolar, and anxiety. So at like 21 years old, I started taking medication. 
and it started making me become bigger because medicine makes you gain weight so I started to become bigger and I'm really insecure um <clears throat> when I was 24 well, let me talk about when I was 21. When I was after my, I broke up with my abusive ex. Um, I started giving myself to guys because I wanted to get over him and <clears throat> guys that didn't even deserve me. And I was just, just trying to like get over the pain. I was trying to feel. And I was trying to fill a void. I had a, a void. So I was trying to fill it by messing around with guys. And then, um, this was like years later, but when I was 24, I was sexually abused. And I, did, I didn't really talk about this on my channel. I talked about it a little bit like way way like in my um old 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 videos but I was just talking about how to get help and stuff I wasn't into detail about what happened but I don't want to get into detail about what happened in this video if you guys want me to do a video on that I will it might be triggering to some people or maybe you don't want to hear it because you don't want to hear something bad happening to me. Because I know y'all care about me. I know y'all love me. So. It may be trigger triggering for you. So just let me know if you guys want to hear it. The, the story or not. Just let me know in the comments. But that happened. And I got PTSD from it. So I got PTSD. So I ended up with PTSD, depression anxiety and bipolar my moods were up and down I had seriously seriously anger issues um let me see I got notes here because like I, I know this is going to be like out of order because I just wrote everything down and it's not even in order <laughs> but I tried to take my life four times and in between the four times I was sexually abused again at 27 or well, the first time was 24 the next time was 27 well, in between those times I tried to take my life four times the last time that I did was in 2016 which was years ago and the first three times wasn't that successful, but the fourth time I took 29 pills, all different ones, and that I, um, my heart, blood pressure went up really high, and I, they didn't want me to fall asleep, because I, I took sleep meds too, and they didn't want me to fall asleep because they were nervous, and it panicked me, it scared me, like, right after they were like, wake up don't fall asleep you can't fall asleep your blood pressure is high you took all these pills like we need to rush you to the hospital so i was in the ambulance and they rushed me to the hospital and then i went to a psychiatric hospital for 14 days um the first time i did it they didn't send me to the hospital or nothing. They're like, you're not gonna do it again, right? I was like, no, I'm not gonna do it again. So they sent me home. The second time I did it, I was in the psychiatric, I can't even talk, psychiatric hospital. And the third time I did it, they sent me to the hospital too. And then the fourth time, they sent me to the, the psychiatric hospital. But I talked about that more in detail. I did a video on that already um so yeah I did a video on that already I will like link it in the description box if you guys want to watch that it was like a 23 minute long video of like the, the detail to detail on what happened so if you guys want to listen to that you guys can listen to that um 
I also, during my bad times, I also was like seeing a drug dealer and I'm sure you're probably like, what? You? No way. But no, I was. And I put myself in dangerous situations that I shouldn't have put myself in. Because that is dangerous, being around someone like that. It's dangerous being around someone like that. And he was a good guy. Don't get me wrong. He was a good guy. You know, but he just did that. And that wasn't the good part about him. It was scary, to be honest. Now that I think about it, when I was in the situation, I didn't really, I didn't really, like I knew being a drug dealer is dangerous and stuff, but I was like naive. I, like not even naive. I just didn't care. And now that I got older, and in my 30s now, all this stuff happened all my 20s. My 20s was the worst experience for me. So, this is all my 20s. So, I didn't realize how dangerous I was putting myself in. Because you never know. Like, you hear drug dealers getting killed. And then you hear about other people that was with the drug dealer getting killed and stuff. So, it's just scary. It's just scary. So, I didn't realize I put myself in a dangerous situation. Um, what else happened? My notes are here. I have to get, make sure I got everything. Okay. I had really bad anger issues. I used to punch holes in the walls in my mom's house when I was living with her. And I used to argue with my mom all the time. I used to call her names. I used to disrespect her. And... At work, when I used to work, I used to get in fist fights with workers because they didn't. I don't learn quick. Like I learn, it takes me a while to learn things because I have a learning disability. And they were getting cocky with me and stuff, and um, they would actually hit me. I didn't hit them first. They would actually hit me, and I will fight. I will fight back. Even though maybe I shouldn't have fought back because I lost my job. But I'm not going to just sit there and let somebody fight me. But it was the crazy situations. I got punched in the face. That one, and the other job that I did, they were racist. And they didn't want to train me or my sister because my sister was with me. And they were racist and they were calling us ghetto. And I'm like, ghetto? I'm far from ghetto and ghetto is not black. Ghetto is not a black person. I don't know why people think ghetto is a black person because that's not true. And I don't come off ghetto or anything to anybody. I don't, this is how I am. This is how I talk. I don't talk ghetto or I don't, I don't, I don't talk like that. I just talk normal. So they pushed, they pushed us and was punching us and stuff. So I hit back. And I wish I just walked away from the situation instead of fighting. Because fighting, what's that solve? That doesn't solve anything. And I wish I was not put in those situations. But now I got to the point where I don't want to work with people. One of the reasons why I do social media because I'm trying to get a career in it because I love it so much. But I don't also don't want to work with people because I have so many bad experiences like this, like that, that I don't want to work with people at all. And I know there's other jobs where you can find where you don't work with many people and stuff like that. So maybe I'll find a job like that while I'm doing YouTube and stuff because I'm not there yet. I don't have that many subscribers or anything. But I do want it as a career so hopefully. But uh, then my ex, my abusive ex-boyfriend came back. We started dating again. He was cheating. Having girls call me the side chick. I did a story time on this. So I'm going to put it in a description box. I did a story time on this story. And 
yeah I did a story time on that but I'm here cheating and sleeping with other girls and it could have gave me something and I just I just that's just nasty to me I don't know why guys cheat I just don't get it I just will never get it but um well, we got in a fist fight. He wanted me to go with him to the D DMV. Because he wanted just company, I guess. So, I went with him. And we were broken up at the time. Because we were breaking up off and on for years. And we went there and... He... He was just... I don't know, being cocky, I guess. And, um... I was just getting annoyed with him, so I go call another guy to get him jealous. So I call another guy to get him jealous, and it made him kind of mad. And then we were just arguing and arguing and arguing, and then I hit him first. And I usually don't hit people first. I'm usually not the hitter, but... It was so much anger from when I was 21 years old dating him to dating him when I was 26, 27, 28. And all that, all that anger and all that stuff built up. And at that moment, it, I was just like, I was just, it just all came out into my fist. It was all the emotion that I kept in for years. So we got in a fist fight. And I punched him, and then he punched me, and then he was holding me down and, like, kicking me in my stomach and stuff. And that's the first time I got hit by a guy, but it, I shouldn't have hit him. But it was still traumatizing to me to get hit by a guy. I never I would expect to get hit by a guy, but I sometimes... but. I do feel like it was my fault but like I said it was so much built up it was just so crazy it was so so crazy all the emotions that I had and I loved him so much I loved him out of all my exes besides my ex-fiance I loved him the hardest and then when I met my ex-fiance I loved him hard too those are like the two. Well, I love all my ex-boyfriends, but like my ex-fiance and then my abusive ex-boyfriend are the two that I love the hardest, I think. So, um, what else was I going to say? This is like all over the place. I'm so sorry. I was just trying to get everything out. But the fight was traumatizing. Someone called the cop. But the cops came to my house and I told them exactly what happened and they were like, well, he deserved it. I'm like, the cop really was like, he deserved it. He deserved to get hit first. I was like, holy smack. The cop was on my side. I was like, whoa, wow. Because like, I felt guilty after that. And that was the third time that I committed suicide because I felt so, tried to commit suicide because I felt so guilty for that. I was so felt so guilty for that and I had bruises all over me my body was hurting and stuff so when I was went to the hospital the psychiatric hospital they took pictures and stuff of it so it was on file but um yeah I felt so guilty for that fight and um so after that fist fight um we talked we talked for a while he was still in my life but after that he got in a relationship and now he just got out of the relationship so we talk sometimes but I don't think it's ever going to be anything more because I don't want to go back to anything that ruined me in my 20s you get what I'm saying? Because now I am 34. I'm about to be 35 in December. My whole life has changed since my 20s. It's 
so much different now. And um I I changed after my nephew was born in 2016, like literally right after I got out of the psych hospital. My nephew was born and was there at his birth and everything. And then that day when I saw him, I was like, oh my God. I need to get more help. I need to deal with my traumas. I need to calm down my anger. And I need to be a role model for my nephew. So I completely changed my life. I stopped, stopped dating abusive men. I stopped giving myself to men. I stopped with the anger. I don't have no anger at all. It takes me so long to get angry. I haven't, I don't even know what's the last time I had an anger outburst. I can't even remember when's the last time I had an anger outburst. And I'm just calm, quiet, collected, laid back. And my family always talk about how different I am. They're like, you're so different now. You're so calm now. You're so just, you're just so different. They always say, and because my anger has completely changed and stuff. But I wanted to read something that I wrote on Facebook. I wanted to share it with you guys because I wrote it the other day. And I was just sitting here the other day. I was just sitting here the other day and I was just like sitting here in my bed. And I was just thinking about how proud I am of myself. And how far I came from all the traumas and the abusive relationships and just everything. So this is what I wrote. I was like, I came a long way. I talk to my parents about this all the time. I used to have the lowest self-esteem. I put myself in dangerous situations. I was in an abusive, it was in the worst abusive relationship. I was a violent person. I had anger issues. It was so bad. My depression was in the way. I thought I was fat at 160 pounds. And I have to tell you about that story. It was just horrible in my 20s and I don't wish to go back. Now I am a calm person. I'm quiet. I say to myself, my self-confidence and self-love is high as hell. <laughs> and I'm not in no abusive relationship no more. I am in no relationship. I am in a relationship with myself. I don't argue no more with people or family. And I am focused on my social media career. I'm focusing on what I love. My past made me who I am now. And I'm so grateful for my past because it made me strong as hell. I'm just proud of me. And everybody started writing in the comments how they're proud of me. Like my family and friends and stuff. Because my friends, they've been through it with me. They've been through it. They've seen all this. And they've been there with me through everything. And they're still with me now. I have... All my friends I had, I knew since elementary school or middle school. My friends are like my family because I knew them for so long. So long. Sorry, my battery died. So now I have to use my phone because I don't have an extra battery. But anyway, I was trying to rush to get off. But I, had, I wanted to talk to you about my weight. When I was 160, I thought I was fat. And I had the lowest self-esteem in my life. During my whole 20s, even then. I had lowest self esteem. And so I used to work out constantly, constantly, and constantly, seven days a week for two hours straight. And I lost 20 pounds, but I lost it rapidly. And my I was in on meds at that time, and my meds needed to get adjusted, but the doctors weren't listening to me. Like when you lose weight, your um, milligrams have to get lowered. So you can get more leveled. And they weren't listening to me. To the point where I was hallucinating. And um, the doctor thought I was schizophrenic. But I wasn't. It was just I was hallucinating. And they weren't listening to me. And then I had to get new doctors and everything. To get back on the straight and narrow. My doctor now. She is amazing. I love her. And I've been with her for four years now. So I'm losing weight now. And I talked to her before about this. Where 
when you lose weight, you have to change your meds. And she's like, yes, I know that you have to change your meds when you lose weight so you can level, be leveled. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed my testimony, my story. I know it was all over the freaking place, but I didn't know how to explain it. <laughs> but I hope this inspired you guys that, oh, I have this quote. Oh, it's on my phone. I can't read it to you guys, but it was saying that you can still you can still have a decent life even after your traumas and your hard times and stuff. You can still have a decent life. So I really enjoyed that quote. I will try to insert the quote in here. Hopefully it will show up. So I will try to insert it in there. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And got inspired by my testimony and my story. And that things do get better. And I used to always pray that I got to this point. And my, my prayers were answered. I always wanted to be level minded. Not, I always wanted to, to not have these anger issues. And not, you know, like to be calm. And deal with my depression and my trauma and stuff better. And I do now. So... I'm glad about that and I, I do believe in God and church and stuff so I feel like God has helped me too. He answered my prayers so I still do have depression, anxiety and bipolar and PTSD. That's not going to go away and I do have depression moments where I don't feel like filming, when I don't feel like doing TikTok, I just feel like laying in bed because I'm so depressed because I still feel like I'm not where I should be with my life. Like sometimes I feel like a failure and like, my family and friends always tell me and my doctors always tell me, why are you so hard on yourself? You're not a failure. You're not even, you're not even failing. But I always feel like I'm failing. I don't know. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was long, but this is my testimony. This is my story in a nutshell. Well, it wasn't a nutshell because it was like 26 minutes long. But if you guys watch it to the end, please put a smiley face in the comments so I know that you guys watch till the end. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, like, comment, share, turn on notification bell so you're not every time me I care. Did both post another video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.